Hi there, grade eights. Welcome to week one math lesson. Today's lesson is about powers. So we're going to start off by just a quick review of knowing that multiplication is just a short form of repeated addition. So I can write 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, or I could simply write 3 times 4, meaning that I'm adding 3 four times, right? Uh, everybody should be familiar with that. Um, and that is a pattern that exists in math. We all know math is patterns. So if it works in addition, it should also work in multiplication. And it does. The pattern for multiplication is a little different, though, uh, simply in how we write it. It's the same idea. I can do repeated multiplication. But how I show repeated multiplication has to be different than how I show repeated addition, right? So if I'm writing... Uh, 5 times 5 times 5. It's time consuming and it takes up a lot of space. However, there is a way to show that that is what I'm doing without writing all that. And that is simply writing the number that I am multiplying and then writing how many times I am multiplying it out. Okay, this um, whole number composed of two uh, numbers or two pieces is referred to as a power. The bottom number or the bigger number, which is the number you're multiplying out, is called the base, okay? And the top number, which is the number of times you're using the base, is the exponent, okay? Now, sorry, this is gonna take me a while. Notice, please, that the only number that gets written is the base, okay? When you're actually working the answer, the only number that gets written is the base. The exponent tells you how many times you're writing the base. That is a big thing to remember when you're working with powers, and uh, it is a very uh, easy mistake that a lot of people make. So you need to pay close attention to that, please. Now, um, so multiplication is commutative, the order, which means simply that it doesn't matter what order we multiply in. Two times five is five times two. Do you think, however, it would be the same thing for powers? So if I swap the place of the base and the exponent. So in the previous slide, we were looking at five, to the power of 3, which meant 5 times 5 times 5. Now, if I swap them, so it's 3 to the power of 5, do you think I'd get the same answer? Well, if you think about what they actually represent, you should be able to answer that. 5 times 5 times 5 versus 3 times 3 times 3 are very different answers. Okay, so you cannot swap places in, in powers, okay? So powers are repeated multiplication, okay? You must evaluate powers before doing multiplication because power is actually the next step up from multiplication, okay? Just like when you're doing... Um, multiplication or addition, you're going to do multiplication before addition because multiplication is the next step up or the more complicated version of addition. Okay. So the order of operations, most of you should have been taught this order. It might not be a B, it might be a P, and the D might come first or the M comes first, but it doesn't matter. The whole order 
stays the same. No matter how you remember the letters, the order is always the same. I use bedmas, okay, and some people use bemdas, so the M and the D get switched, and some people use a P for pedmas or pemdas. It doesn't matter, okay? B is brackets. E is what we're talking about right now. E is exponents, okay? Then we would do division and multiplication, whichever comes first, left to right. And then we do, <coughs> excuse me, no, it's not COVID-19. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, addition and subtraction last. Again, what appears left to right, okay? Something you need to remember whenever you're talking about powers is if you are using the exponent 2, it is called squaring the number or the base squared. And then if you're using the exponent 3, it is known as cubing the number or the base cubed. Okay, you're going to hear me say that a lot, like 2 squared, 3 cubed, uh, 4 squared. 16 cubed, okay? You should be familiar with both of these words already because we use them for area, right? When we talk about area, we talk about our units being squared units, and we talk about cubic or cubed units when we're talking about volume, okay? So these aren't new terms. But now we're actually applying them to numbers, not just uh, units, okay? So let's take a look at how this works. 2 to the fourth power, okay? So my base, sorry, is 2, okay? The power of 4 tells me I'm going to write 2 four times. which gives me 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. Okay. Next one is 6 to the 8th power. Okay. So 6 to the 8th power is, sorry, I was trying to switch to touch screen, but it's not going to let me, is again, the bigger number is what I'm going to be writing. So six is what I write, and I write it eight times. Now this one, I'm going to get you guys to get the answer for, um, because I don't have my calculator handy. Um, so one, two, three, four, five... Six. <laughs> I was about to write a seven. Seven. Eight times. Okay. And then you write whatever your answer is. Okay. Ten to the third power will be ten times ten. times 10, which is a very cool property. It is 1,000. Notice the number one and then three zeros. Notice the power is three and, whoops, sorry, the number of threes. Uh, sorry, three is the power and there are three zeros. Okay. So when you're working with 10, it's super easy to get the answer. It's just one and whatever the exponent is, that's how many zeros you add. Super easy. And then 16 to the six, I'm going to leave that to for you to write out in your notes, uh, simply because <laughs> it's going to take me forever to write 16 six times. Okay. But it would be 16 times 16 times 16 times 16 times 16 times 16 
equals, and then write whatever you can do it on a calculator and um, uh, get your answer. Now, just a note about calculators. Some of you are going to have scientific calculators, hopefully. You should have a button that looks like this. It may be on the button or it may be above a button, okay? Um, that So what you're going to do with that button is you're going to put in 16. You put in your base first. That's what the X is. Then you hit this button and then you put in your power and then you get your answer. I suggest trying it with two to the fourth first just to make sure you're getting it right. Your other option is this button. So you'd put in your base. So two, you hit that button, you hit your power four, and you hit enter, or it might just spit it out automatically for you, and it would give you your answer. Okay, that's if you have a scientific calculator. If you don't have a scientific calculator, then you're going to have to do two times two times two times two. Um, but if you're on a computer right now, you have a scientific calculator handy. So by all means, please find that uh, app on your computer and start using it. And to change from regular view to scientific view, I think it's in the view option. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this. 10 to the third times 10 to the second. So 10 to the third, how many tens are there in there? There are three tens, which is 1,000, right? Be careful. You're not multiplying 10 three times, right? I know I said three tens, but what I meant was 10 times 10, oops, come here, 10, times 10, okay? Then I'm multiplying by... 10 to the second power, which is another two tens, which is when I write it out as an actual full number, 100. Okay, so my answer is 1000 times 100, which is 100,000. Okay, but again, mathematicians like to be efficient and not use up so much space. So instead of writing all those zeros, we're just going to write 10. And then how many tens do we actually have? Well, we have five tens. So 10 to the third times 10 to the second or 10 cubed times 10 squared is 10 to the fifth. Same idea down here. 10 to the fifth times 10 to the fourth, okay? Um, so I have five tens and I have four tens. So all together, I would have one with how many zeros? Well, five, two, three, four, oops, five, <laughs> some glasses in there for you, and then another four, one, two, three, some more glasses, four, okay? Then we put in our commas. So in groups of three, remember please, one, two, three. So what do we got? We've got one billion. How do I write that in simplified form? Well, five tens and four tens gives me nine tens, okay? And again, remember when we're talking about tens and this only works for tens, to Right, go from uh, power form or exponent form to expanded form to the actual answer. All you have to do is write the one and the power tells you how many zeros you add. Super easy. So take a look. Let's practice. 10 to the fourth and times 10 cubed. Okay, 10 to the fourth times 10 cubed. How many tens here? Well, we've got four tens and we've got three tens. So that means how many tens altogether? You got it, seven tens. So all I really have to do is add the powers. So let's try it over here in D. I've got five tens over here, one ten over here. So it's going to be ten to the five plus one is six. 
Over here, I've got three tens, three tens, three plus three, 10 to the six. Six tens, two tens, 10 to the eight. So from the previous problems we just did, how can you get the exponent and the answers from the other two exponents? You simply add, oops, come here, add the powers. Now, this only works if the bases are the same, okay? The bases aren't the same, it's not going to work. But as long as the bases are the same, you're good. So do you think this will be true for any base or just base 10? So if I have 2 to the third times 2 to the, I don't know, let's say 6, would the answer be 2 to the ninth? You think it holds, right? It's what we did for base 10. Should it be any different for base 2? Again, mathematics is pattern, so no, there is no difference. So here we go. 3 squared would be 2 threes. Ooh, that's a bad 2. Sorry. <laughs> that's even worse. All right, let me erase that. Um, here we go. Okay, let's go back. So 3 squared is 2 threes, 3 threes, 4 threes. So all together, 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 3, 9. 3 to the 9th. Okay. Over here, 7 with nothing means there is 1, 7, right? 7 squared, 2 sevenths. 7 to the 3rd, 3 sevenths, or 7 cubed. Use our correct terminology. 7 to the 4th would be 4 7 7 to the 5th, 5 7 7 to the 6th, 6 7 7 to the 7th, 7 and 7 to the 8, 8. So to get my total number of 7s, just add them up. So 1 plus 2 uh, is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15, plus 6 is 21, plus 7 is 28, plus 8 is 36. So you got to see that this is way more efficient, writing 7 to the 36 than writing 7 times 7, 36 times. That would be crazy. Now, here's a cool little trick. If you've got the same power, okay, but the bases are different, then it doesn't matter what the power is when you're comparing because they're doing the same thing. What well, all you have to do is compare the bottom number. So 43 squared or 47 squared, well, 47 is bigger than 43 always, no matter what I do to it. So it, this answer, whatever I do to 47, as long as I'm doing the same thing to 43, is going to be the same thing. So I don't need to pay any attention as long as the same thing's happening to both of them. So if we look over here, I've got 43 to the third, or cubed, and 47 cubed. So they're the same thing. So just ignore it. Which one's bigger, 43 or 47? Well, 47's bigger, so this answer will always be bigger. Same thing here. 43 to the 19th power or 47 to the 19th power? Again, same powers, so ignore it. Which number, which base is bigger? 47 is bigger, so the answer has to be bigger. As long as you're doing the same thing to both, it doesn't matter what you're doing. All you have to do is compare the size of the base. And that's it. Those are the basics of what you need to get done the work to this week. Uh, so your work this week is page... 137 to 140, it's actually 140, not 141, sorry guys, um, and uh, they're attached below this video. If you need any help, just uh, send out a, just send out a message uh, and we'll be there to help you. Good luck, have a good week guys.